Hello from GNHL.com, this is Mark Josie. Today I'm going to do a review and also an update of this nice air gun here, the Beretta uh, CX-4 Stone and it's supposed to be the tactical carbine. It comes with a uh, bipod, uh, bipod with four grip kind of thing and uh, I'm not putting that on here because it doesn't really fit my taste a lot. And for the suppressor, it's supposed to come with uh, another one, but I took the one from my Blackbird and uh, throws Blackbird and put it on. It looks nicer like that. And also for the scope, it's supposed to come with this scope here, the Beretta, Beretta scope. You see there's the uh, Beretta, the name, and also you see there's a tri-rail here. You can mount anything on the side. But somehow I don't like the scope a lot, so um, I put a red dot sight on like this. Okay, and it looks much nicer like that. Ha! <laughs> okay, so what's so special about this uh, rifle here? The rifle is not a very, very powerful rifle, but then it's a very fun rifle. Why? Let's take a look at this cool thing. Okay, first, um, let's take a look at the magazine. This is the magazine. It looks like that. You see all that holes? Okay, so that's 30 shots of uh, .177 caliber pellets. And it just rotates like that. You just use the hand, the finger, to rotate the belt and then insert pellets from the back. And you put it back on like that. Like, like a normal dropout magazine. Okay. And there you go. Okay. So with um, yeah, with this rifle, it also feature a blowback action. So here you see there's a bolt. Okay, you have to cock the gun like that once, and then you shoot. See. So of course, when the gun is charged up, uh, you just cock once, and then you keep shooting until the CO2 is out. It doesn't lock back on the last shot, but then still, it's kind of fun, and um, it's a blowback action. Okay, you don't you don't see this thing here going back and forth, back and forth. You just cock once to cock the mechanism inside, and you fire. Okay, so when you're shooting, you cock once, and then you fire until all the steel two is out, and then um, the this thing will go into full auto. Like like that, and then uh, you can discharge the uh, you can like take the, take away the steel too, and uh, that's it. Okay, so unfold the bipod. Looks like that. Pretty tactical vibe. And the gun is mostly made of uh, some nice plastic. Not very much. Uh, actually, I don't even feel any metal at all. <laughs> uh, only the barrel here is metal. Okay, the barrel is about that long here. Okay, and it comes with one, two, and three rail, and four for the scope. Okay, four rail, so you can put light, laser, bipod, and a scope or whatever on it. It feels pretty light compared to most of the uh, uh, rifles, the air rifles. It's not really, really uh, cheap feeling plastic though. It feels more sturdy than the uh, steel stone and the and uh, the steel force. It's more like a, you know, it feels like a real deal, <laughs> not like a uh, toy. And now let me uh, show you how you take this um, the butt stock out like that. Okay, you see there's a uh, notch. So basically, you take it out by squeezing this part. And then it will come out. Nah. Okay, there we go. Okay. So the inside looks like that. And you see this is the place where you put the CO2 in. And then here is nothing. Okay. So here you can put a little bit of stuff here at uh, the bottom, whatever you want. Little storage. Put it back. Okay, obviously screw in the CO2 and that. That's it. So, usually, for this gun, you use the 88 gram CO2. 
88 grams CO2 are expensive. This is the Liz brand, which is the nice brand that I like. Uh, Liz brand CO2. It looks like that. And here is the fancy one, Walter brand. It comes with a nice case, cardboard case. And then when you open it, there are two CO2 inside. Okay, two. So let's take one out and take a look at that together. Because not everyone will buy this. <laughs> so it looks like that. Nice packaging, individually packaged. And also you see the difference is they give you a cap here for uh, protecting the thread. So basically you have to really screw the cap off. Oh, and the finish on it is more glossy, smoother, stuff like that. Okay, so it comes with a cap. Pretty nice. So if you buy the Walter CO2, keep the cap because you can use it for other uh, brand of CO2 that you may buy. For example, the Crossman. But somehow, you know, online people say that the Crossman CO2 is kind of, you know, dirty inside. And they did a test about... Oh, um, the water brand is cleaner uh, and like people cut them in half and uh, use a swab to test the inside and say, wow, look at that. Like this Crossman like CO2, okay, Crossman brand like CO2, it's kind of dirty and this one is clean. So whatever. This is the JT brand CO2. Okay, now this is the fun thing. You see, this is a used CO2, right? It's a used one. So it's empty inside. And I bought this from Alliance Hobby and uh, they made this for converting your 88 gram CO2 to HPA. Look at that. This is the quick disconnect fittings. Okay. So what you do is instead of screwing in a CO2, you screw in the thing. It's basically the same thing as a CO2 cartridge. See, it's the same thing. So you screw this on, and then for here, you hook up a cable or a hose okay, to your uh, HPA tank or your um, bulk CO2 tank, and make sure that you, you know, uh, keep the HPA regulated to a safe pressure. For me, I tested 850 PSI and 1000 PSI, and it works fine. But, you know, I think, Okay, don't try that. I think uh, it may be okay to go up to 1,200 to 1,400 uh, PSI, something like that. I will, I will try uh, maybe 1,200 to uh, uh, 12, 1,200 or 1,400 PSI. I may try that, okay? But don't try that yourself because it may be dangerous. Maybe if I try it and uh, it's okay, I'll post again, uh, post a video and show you guys, okay? So here, let's open this gun. And today we're going to use HPA. The good side about HPA is that the FPS is very, very stable. You don't, you don't have that like, wow, all of a sudden you got 600 FPS and then, wow, soon you got like 200, wow, 300, you know, it jumped all over the place. With CO2, the problem is that um, the FPS is not stable. With this gun, okay, at the first shot, with CO2, I can get like, uh, oh, 400 something FPS. And then the next shot, it drops right to uh, 390 something. And then it just keeps going down, 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 down. And by the time it's on a 10th shot, you may get like 300 FPS only. So it's, it's really bad. And um, especially with a magazine with 30 pellets, you don't, you don't want to like really do some, you know, careful sniping. You want to go fast, like assault rifle, like bang, 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 bang like that. So, for that kind of shooting, you, you cannot enjoy it with CO2. CO2 just, wow, it drops way really down. And um, by the time you finish one magazine, you quickly put the second mag in, okay? And then you keep shooting. You, you can't even like see the pellet flying out at night if, if you have a flashlight. It's really getting like really, really slow. So, HPA is really fun. <laughs> 
The downside though, okay, is when you screw this on, because you need to hook up a cable, you cannot put this cover back on. Uh oh, you see, you can't put it back on because you need the end and it's also poking at the back end so it doesn't fit anymore. There are two ways to overcome this problem. You can cut a hole here and modify this thing which I want to do in the future or you can just go like me, okay? Forget about the stock. Use this L shape as the stock and see now it rests on your shoulder like an L shape. See, it's very comfortable actually. You change the um, whole, like the whole gun's vibe into a more tactical, compact kind of uh, carbine. So that's how it is. Now let's take a look at the um, setup here today, okay, for the HPA. First we got a tank, you need a tank, and you need a hose. The remote coil hose uh, is what they use in paintball. And then you connect this to the top, turn, 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 whatever, okay, like that. And then the other end here, with the quick disconnect, you connect to the gun, uh, to the CO2. And then you put this around your belt, like your, your waist, okay, wrap around yourself, like so, with a belt. Quick, see, you wrap around like that. So now this thing goes here and you just keep shooting. Okay, so that's how it is. So everyone, at the end here, I want to show you up close uh, how the gun looks like. So here we go, some details. The uh, trigger is uh, plastic, everything is plastic very much. For the uh, mag release, you cannot push from the right side. You must always push with the thumb on the left side only, and then pull this out. Okay. Keep looking. It's actually a very beautiful rifle. It looks very nice, but uh, you have to treat this as a uh, a fun shooting gun, not a sniper rifle, hunting rifle kind of thing. It's not going to go really high FPS. Not going to go really deadly. Really really accurate, you know, that kind of stuff. Not really crazy, but it's a fun, fun rifle because uh, it's a nice, very close uh, replica of the Rio Dio um, CX-4 Storm. And also, it's a very realistic feeling gun. When you hold it, it feels very real. I like the uh, Steel Force that it feels more like a uh, imitation toy kind of thing. So, um, the problem, the only problem I found with this gun here is the, um, like from the handling, is how you change the mag, okay? When I'm shooting like that with my right hand here, and I want to change the mag, okay? You can't just press here and pull the mag out, it's not gonna work. You need to really twist the gun around and press with the other hand thumb, and then with the pinky here, you have, you can release the mag like that. It's very hard to release the mag with your right hand, so it's kind of weird, and this thing here is blocking the way, so it's very hard to reload quickly. So that's the only thing, and at the end here, before I start with the shooting session, we will load a few shots of the mag together, and let's just see how it works. So you take some pellets, see, and then you lay the pellets on the belt. Okay, make sure that um, the pellets are pushed in. So I'll let you see here, see the pellet? I like that. And then you push them in one by one. You see? And make sure that you also push it in uh, hard so that it's going to sit properly and not fall out during the operation. See, so you repeat that and you keep rotating and then you keep pushing pellets in. So that's 30 shots of pellet. Okay guys, so let's go to uh, our range and we'll do some shooting session with target practice and stuff like that. I'm gonna stand at about uh, 15 feet and we'll shoot a few mags uh, of this. 
And here, at last, I want to give a, um, a safety uh, tip to everyone who, who are using HPA setup like me. If you buy one of these and you want to shoot with HPA, remember, okay? Remember, when you hook up the hose, turn on the, um, the tank, with, uh, with the hose, turn on the tank, okay? When you're about, uh, like, shooting to your last mag, okay? When you're at your last mag. Turn off the valve. Okay, turn off here, so that there's all there there are air inside the hose and also inside the CO2 tube here, 88 gram of whatever. Okay, so you have all that air. Now shoot the last mag until you ran out of air, or like keep shooting, keep cocking, shoot and shoot and shoot until you hear there's like sound, and then you shoot and hold on to your trigger so that the air release like all the air release and keep releasing air with empty shots and uh, of course the muscle pointing in a safe direction while you do it and when you empty all the air then you can disconnect the hose do not disconnect the hose before you empty the air out or else you'll hear a loud bang like that and it's very scary or if it's too pressurized and uh, still charge very like uh, like to 1,000 psi, and you try to pull that thing off, it's going to be dangerous. So let's go to the range and shoot. Okay, everyone. So here's our target. Uh, we'll stand from 15 feet and test the gun out. Now I'm using HPA setup. So let's take a look. First shot. Oh, caught the gun. Okay guys, I'm done with my first mag. Uh, here, I'd like to say that the gun is now very um, sniper-like. Okay. Not very sniper-like, you can see. I was trying to aim here, uh, the center, and it keeps getting a grouping like that. I was also aiming here and here, and it's not really grouping well. The gun itself will, be, will do much better when you do it, like when you shoot with a bipod. But without a bipod, it's very horrible. So let's take a look here again. The uh, next one. Yeah, I'm standing uh, 15 feet to 16. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, oh, finally. Okay, I'm going to shoot to the center right now. Okay, I'm going to shoot the center, so I'll take this off, I'm going to shoot all the way here, so you can see that, how the gun groups, okay, only the center, now let's take a look everyone, emptying the mag, Seems like the gun is uh, stuck with the mag here. Okay. Okay, everyone. Uh, the, the mag seems to stuck from time to time, not so good.
So yeah, the mag is uh, kind of getting stuck. So I'll turn off the valve right now. I'll turn off the valve. Okay, and everyone, you can see how I uh, emptied out the uh, the the air on inside the gun right now. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. But before we do that, you can see that the groupings. Um, my second attempt grouping is not very bad. It's mostly here. The sight is not really accurate, maybe. So, yeah, need to take some time to play around with the gun. And, okay, so now let's take a look at how I empty the gas out. Okay, now you see I'm here with the hose and uh, stuff. So we cut the gun, put a empty magazine inside, and there we go. So what we need to do is to empty the gun out. So it's easy, just keep shooting. Cock the gun, like this, and you keep shooting. 10 shots, okay, count with me. I turned them off, uh, off already, so count how many shots we need to shoot. That's 10. 20. 30. 40 50 60 That's 70 80 90 100 Okay, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, One hundred seventy-six. That's what you want to do. Keep trying. So basically, you know, if you really charge the gun up and you want to shoot only two magazines, you can really just charge it up and then turn it off <laughs> and then let the air be there and you can shoot like 170 shots. Wow, it's like really crazy, eh? So that's a good side about it. Let's take a look at this. Yeah, not very bad. A small, like that. Just a note here, when I, um, look at that gap here. Look at here, okay. You see there's a gap? So, yeah, when I was uh, charging the gun up, this this uh, gap here just expand, and somehow you feel the, the thing is like, the gas push forward and that gap expands. So I'm thinking of how to uh, tighten the gap up so that it won't be so bad. Or else when you're holding the gun, it feels like the gun is going to break apart. It's kind of scary like that, okay? But the internal should be fine. <laughs> so yeah, everyone, you can see that the um, result, okay? Right here, the result. It's not too bad for a uh, fling fling gun. Okay, it grouped mostly around here. Well, that shot, not bad, eh? So, yeah, it's a fun gun to shoot. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and like. Bye-bye.